So hello everyone and uh, thank, uh, thank you the organizers for inviting me to this conference. Today I'll try to present a, a somehow different perspective, it's obvious, taken from the works of Polish writer Leopold Buczkowski. Unfortunately I would only be able to outline some problems, also it should be said that due to time constraints I will only be talking about his most famous novel The Black Torrent or Czarny Potom in Polish. So, uh, we need to start from the, from the multicultural setting of Buczkowski's life and work. He was born in Galicia and he also had written almost exclusively about this region. So, Galicia was a, a fake political entity created by Habsburg propaganda to, to justify the partitions of Poland. The result was that the region was ruled by the outsiders and they cultivated a typical 19th century police state. So, ethnic tensions were not so prominent despite, despite the differences. The situation in Galicia before the two wars was, for instance, very different than the typical sphere of cultural conflict, as here brilliantly described by Yates. Great hatred, little room. That's it. In Galicia, nationalist sentiments were largely subdued, hence the, the, the myth of, of Austria felix. But, all right, well, we all know that, more or less. Uh, so let's move on to the discourse regarding literature of this region because there lies the main peculiarity of, of Buczkowski's work. So presently, Galicia falls into broader category, category of borderland culture uh, with a subcategory of borderland literature. Borderlands are simply meeting grounds or melting pots of cultures, as Jadwiga Szydłowska wrote the most important feature of the literature of Borderland is a conceptualization of the issue of the Borderland as a space situation of neighborhood and cultural exchange. The literature of Borderland implicates the fact of language ambivalence and the presence of the others in the literature. So, it is a literature which reflects heterogeneous cultural landscape of a, of a, of a certain zone. Well, so, this does not have to be a contemporary place. For instance, uh, Ginter Grass and, and, and Stefan Finn write about Borderlands in Gdansk although they have very different experiences of it. Now, to confuse things a bit, Polish culture also uses the term kresy, sometimes also translated as borderlands, but to me the term frontiers is much more appropriate. So these terms evokes uh, a kind of cultural hegemony of Poland over the historical borderlands, or treats this place not as a melting pot of cultures, uh, of different cultures, but the place which belongs only to, the, to one culture, to the Polish culture. So this perception not only contradicts completely borderland discourse, but naturally could be viewed from the colonial or post-colonial perspective, hence the picture of, of Edward Said here. So just to be brief, a book written in or about that region is usually viewed through those opposing lenses. It could either be a borderland or crested. So that is where Puczkowski comes in. He was born in Galicia and is the part of it and lived until the war in Potkami, near, near Brody. And this part of region could be described as, as melting pots of melting pots, right? For instance, Podkamien, despite a large Jewish populace, was the home of the famous Dominican order and monastery and boasted a miraculous painting of, of, of the Virgin Mary, and hence it was called Częstochowa of the East. Brody was probably a Jewish cultural and spiritual capital of Galicia, hence the name Jewish Jerusalem of the Austrian Empire. Jewish culture truly tried there. Uh, uh, here is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a picture of, of, of a famous type of, music, of Jewish musicians from Brody. They were called Goda singers. One of the characters in Black Torrent is, actual, is actually such a musician. And then, of course, uh, the countryside was inhabited by Poles, Ukrainians, Germans, and Jews as well. So it would be very hard to find more multicultural place. Now, comes Buczkowski, who was not only a novelist, but also an avant-garde novelist. His works almost exclusively depict Holocaust and other pogroms in Galicia, of which he was a victim, as he lost all of his family during the war except for his mother. His most famous novel, Black, Black Torrent, was translated and published by, by the MIT, of, of all people of all institutions, which actually in the early 70s ran a, a series of postmodern Polish novels. For instance, A Dream Book of Our, of our Times was also uh, printed by them. Uh, now, 
how to situate Black Tower within the framework of borderland business. I have listed main features that borderland literature should possess. So, for instance, narrative is set in multicultural zone, uh, or, or characters' subjectivity is defined by their cultural identity. We have the presence of other in the narrative, and so on. Well, the problem is that the Black Torrent has none of them, which makes my presentation a bit difficult because it is hard to talk about the absence of something uh, using examples. Uh, yet, despite being set in the multicultural world and being about people from different cultures, it does not depict them in this way. Uh, however, it is also has none of the features of the frontier crazy discourse. It depicts people from very different cultures, where Polish culture is not dominant at all, and they are all described uniformly. For instance, there are no Germans in the novel that are outside that are from outside of Galicia. Uh, just to brief you, generally the plot is about the destruction of Jewish temple, uh, which is described in almost as apocalyptic disaster, and the aftermath of it. And we start from the aftermath, so the, the destruction is in retrospective. So in the aftermath, the survivors simply trying to survive. So majority of the novel is set in a kind of post-apocalyptic world where the survivors are being hunted by the local author authorities, mostly the police. Uh, the landscape picture in Bractar and describing it close to this famous passage from Saint, uh, Antoine de saint Exupéry, uh, wind, sand, and stars. Here's the, 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 the French original, uh, and here is the English translation. <coughs> Do you realize that there are lands on the globe where when men meet you, they bring up their rifles to their cheeks? So, basically the human culture reverted to a very basic stage. This erosion of multiculturalism is achieved by combining two aspects. Uh, one is uh, the aftermath world is reduced and culturally unified, and the second is inhabitants of this post holocaust the aftermath world, cannot connect uh, to the past. Uh, generally, people are reduced to bad features of existence, like acquiring resources, and their cultural identity is almost <coughs> non-existent. This could be represented by, by the arrows here. Okay? Uh, we have different cultures, and different arrows, then the apocalypse happened, and uh, what is left is unified. Yet any return to past, uh, even and most importantly, uh, connection through memories is, is severed. There is, there is no return. Uh, interestingly, the book uh, uh, seems to go even further, as it also challenges the, the very notion that these cultures were actually really different and autonomous before. Uh, as the Holocaust had de has deconstructed the, the, the fragility of cultural identity in itself. But we probably would not have time to delve deeper into this at all. So, one thing, we must remember that this is an avant-garde postmodernist novel. Therefore, what is clear in my assessment is not by far in reading. Especially since Butchkowski is using uh, Viktor Shklovsky's category of estrangement to confuse readers at all times. So this is the opening of the book, and as you can see, right off the bat, we have 30 different names of characters mentioned just to confuse readers, because most of them do not appear later on. Uh, all right, so the first feature, reduction of the aftermath world, could be outlined by, by these citations, uh, which represent a typical Buchkowski human, a, a man of uncertain subjectivity. Not only name, but the whole person, is, its being seems to be a very fluid. For instance, uh, characters often disappear completely from the scenes, and the reader is never sure which person is presented at which, at which moment. Well, of course, they are also completely decontextualized. Here we have three, three characters. Uh, Busbaum is a rabbi, and Banczewski is a priest. So, uh, they are religious figures, but they have no connections whatsoever to their respective religions. It is especially remarkable in, in Banczycki's case, he is one of the most prominent protagonists of the novel, yet I do not even know if he is a Catholic priest, or perhaps Greek priest. When we meet him, not only does he not evolve his religion at any moment, but his social function, function as rector is already an empty world, as, as his parishes were now tragically burned and killed. Uh, he still lives in his rectory, but he is a person of the non-existent parish. Gay, on the other hand, 
uh, is a, as a Nazi creep, or a, an officer of the Nazi criminal police, and he's also connected to Banchitsky as priest mother was a servant in guy's family home. But uh, it could be an interesting thing, but not for Kuchkowski, because that is mentioned only in, in, in one passing. It is mentioned in passage. Uh, this three represent all the authority, authority of the old world, uh, especially these two, as they uh, represent also political order. Although they never evoke it, they still represent it. So their deaths, they all die, uh, is also a symbolic death of the remnants of the old world. So the principal mode of existence for cartels of Black Torrent is movement. So people live in motion. And uh, this is not uncommon for the work like literature of borderlands. For instance, uh, the, uh, the constant compulsive movement is the main activity uh, in Novel Royce by, by Tadeusz Konwicki. However, there the movement is an act of asserting colonial domination as Polish partisans move from one village to another, their presence marks the territory as Poland. In Black Torrent, movement is purely existential and removed completely from multicultural framework. People live as nomads, moving around through not only desolated but the contextualized space. The center is in the Banchitsky Rectory, which is a meeting place for all involved, hunters and hunters as well. So, hunters and hunters as well. So, moving on to the second issue, the inability to connect to the past. Now, this is a, a, a bit difficult since there are very few instances where the pre-war past is evoked at all in the entire book. But when it is summoned, it's always like this. One of the protagonists returns to the remains of his home. So here we have Horseface, which that's his name. Horseface crept into the orchard and looked at the burned cherry tree for the last time. Once leaning against it, he had kissed the milk warm lips. He turned to the yard and knelt on the threshold on which his mother had stood in March to scatter grains for the hands. Then he pulled a burned axe out of the ashes and looking around at Tombak's dark and silent hut, he strolled into the cemetery. So, there is no emotional connection whatsoever, and the attention of the character is immediately drawn by the, by the axe, by, by a utility which holds real value. Uh, here is a different fragment from, from one of the book narrators. It's a similar situation, he returns home. So uh, he is uh, saying, no, not that way. I had got lost. The cold shook me. I walked slowly, listened, and looked around. I was looking for a house. Maybe it wasn't true that they tore a house down. A white house with red windows. I was thinking calmly, without bitterness. Never anywhere will there ever be a prettier little house, a more beautifully blossoming garden, no such flowers in the window, not that rustling sunny field immediately beyond the garden. I heard a song that had already died. Everything went after that song. There is no road any place. All the doors are wide open, the windows blind and black. People, children, all had sunk into the earth. Nobody mourns for men. So again, no emotions, emptiness in general failed to connect to the emotional side of the past. There's only analytic. Of course, these instances are provoked by the, by the close proximity of the actual remains, real things which would trigger memory. Yet still, no reconnection is, is made. So to sum up, this all could be viewed as, as a deliberate attempt to create a narrative which, we, which would be appropriate for the Holocaust that the destruction is real and all our commemorations are post-memory, are artificial and, and, and forged. Uh, there is no return from the reduced, erased culture, only recreating uh, a new past. However, Buczkowski, who viewed his own books as doc documents, would probably consider such recall as, as hubris. <coughs> but the very tragic nature of the cultural destruction lies in its permanence. This was lost forever even to the memory. So, uh, with that I will conclude. So thank you for your presentation, thank you for your time. If you have any questions, feel, please feel free to ask. Thank you very much for this really interesting presentation. Uh, any questions? Uh, I wanted only to, to add some uh, words. Uh, south of uh, eastern part of uh, let's say, Eastern Poland in the time, uh, were Romania. And in Transylvania, we have very similar situation with yes. German uh, towns, uh, Jewish uh, societies, etc. And uh, many years ago, I didn't speak Romanian at all in the time. I entered to the train, and uh, I 
do you know where is my uh, place in the uh, train? And I asked a man, where is my place? And I tried to Romanian a bit, but uh, the man proposed me to speak Hungarian, Serbian, uh, Italian, uh, in, uh, German, etc. I was sure it was a professor. No, he wasn't. He was a worker, and he told me that he learned five or six la languages uh, just near his house because he played football with neighbors speaking Hungarian, Serbian, etc. So, Martin. Yeah, yeah, it is Martin, but actually, it's, we have similar this, the, the experiences in all uh, Middle Europe, it's, it's in Middle, middle, middle Europa. Right, where, where, which is uh, a cultural, a cultural phenomenon, which unfortunately now is, is is fading away very very fast. But we can actually um, put it against, for example, nation states of, of Western Europe, which are very actually they are very nationalistic. For instance, France compared to compared to even the the the, 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 the Balkan states. But uh, the, also the funny thing is that uh, all those. Societies are multicultural, but they also are mm, kind of unified. For instance, Galicia is like a, a Generally, here is the place where, where, where Buczkowski wrote and where, where, where lived. He's brought it, and here is Podkami. So, as you can see, it's, uh, oh, it's very close to, to Volin. Actually, the, the Podkami pogrom is a part of, of, of Volinia genocide, genocide. But it's not really true because uh, even during the war, this uh, border was still visible. Uh, all the peoples from there were described as Russians, even they were Jewish. Poles, Poles, Germans, and Ukrainians. They have pretty much the same uh, ethnic uh, complexity, but they were described as Russians, because this, this, this was a very sharp border created by a completely artificial kingdom, because this is a, it's the kingdom of Galicia and Northern Maria, so it's uh, coolest for uh, Halicza and Włodzimierza. So it's like, uh, it, 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 it evokes the, 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 imper the, 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 the kingdom of Hungary, the old clans from, dating from 14th century, but yes. And in Constanza, to Black Sea coast, in Romania, uh, there were more than 40 uh, nations uh, living together in peace. So I spoke with uh, just uh, one lady from the time, uh, town, and I asked her uh, what what nationality are you? And she told me, huh, it's the most difficult question you can ask because my yeah. mother was my father. Well. <laughs> but if you ask her who is the national Romanian poet, she would say Ovidi, Ovid, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question.